All right, welcome back. So as we, you can see here, we actually have the plate showing all the different feeds and speeds that are used on the quick change gearbox. Now, what I want to do is make a replacement. I did a test before, and while you could say this is good enough, there's definitely areas like up here where you can see that it didn't really etch evenly. And over here overall is really shallow and it was kind of hard to get even this kind of look on here. And this is also just some cheap spray paint whereas I want to actually put a good enamel paint on there. So I've already cut out another appropriate sized piece of brass sheet. And now I'm going to get on to applying our transfer layer to this and starting the etching. First step though. This, as you can see, comparing one side to the back, this is that what that uh, fresh surface would look like as this comes out of a bigger sheet. And I've taken some heavy grit sandpaper and sanded everything down, just swirl pattern, so that we can get a really rough surface on here. It does a lot towards helping making sure a transfer state layer sticks on there. But second of all, and almost more importantly so, is that you want to throw some acetone on there and wipe off any of the residue that is going to come from that whole sanding process and any oil from fingerprints. Just overall, you want to have a really clean surface here. And that'll make sure we don't have any oils or dust or dirt that will get in the way of our transfer layer and make it so that we can't get it to stick down well. And this is really important. If you do not do this step, you're going to have all sorts of little artifacts. And there we go. We're clean. And as you can see, a decent amount of gunk came off of what looked like a relatively clean piece of metal. Now we move on to the heating. All right, welcome into the kitchen. What I've done here is I've set down a griddle with the temperature set at around 350 degrees. That's kind of what we're aiming for, though the thermostat control on these isn't super accurate. So as you can see on there, I actually have a digital thermometer for a oven hooked up to it. I've just set the target temp above something so it just doesn't beep at me the whole time. And I just set it on here and let it get all the way up to temp. And we are aiming for 350. Plus or minus five degrees should be good, but from at least the application layer that I am working with, the target temperature for it said over 300, 340 degrees and below 360. So somewhere around 350 is our good target temp. And I found that on the lower range of that, it really doesn't apply as well. But yeah, what we'll do, set it on here, right in the center, even heat, and we get it up to temp. All right, we are now over 350 degrees. So... What we'll do is we carefully take our transfer sheet, and here's the one I have. We're going to space this out. We want to very carefully lay it down flat. We don't want to roll this around or anything while we're doing this stage, because it will heat and smudge. So we place that down, and then I have an application roller. We just Take this and roll against it. And this should be silicone, so it shouldn't actually a high temp silicone so that it won't melt at the temperatures we're dealing with. Well, hopefully I got this for real cheap from Hobby Lobby and seems to do a good job. I haven't noticed any issues with it. So we're just gonna keep gently rolling this down and that should make sure we're getting a good layer application on there. It looks like this does do a good job as long as I don't touch the surface below where it's 
a little bit hotter. All right, so I'll shut off the heat now. And now we just need to take, pull this off and let it cool down. We can set it on something else, metal, to have it cool a little bit quicker. And now giving this some time to cool off, moment of truth. So one nice hint when you're printing these off, print several on a sheet because first of all, you're not going to be able to reuse the sheet. And second of all, if and when you do mess up, because it'll happen regardless of how well you've got the process down as sometimes they'll come out wrong, you'll have spares. Oh, so far we're looking pretty good, but uh, some of these areas seem a little bit spotty in here. I don't know how well you can see that. Don't know if that's going to be good enough. Looks from that though says that uh, from my experience that that was a little bit too hot on that side. That's usually where you'll see issues where it kind of bubbles up. And when it does that, you end up with these micro little spots all over and as you can see here we kind of lost some detail around the one and the two there and we had some spots over here so this is probably going to end up being a uh, scrap one well I say scrap is in this part right this uh this application layer is gonna have to be redone i normally if you have a couple uh thing uh you know mistakes like this on one side you can just take some nail polish and paint it on there to kind of cover up for those but with a bunch of the spottiness over here i think i'll redo this all right so now we're going to go on to the etching and i've tried a few different ways of doing this and including using like a bubbler to give you extra etching action. Here, let's uh, get these gloves off. But uh, in my experience, a lot of those can, when you do stuff like that, it actually is introducing some more inconsistency into how the process goes. And it just, I've had, I don't have really consistent results with using like a bubbler or an agitator of sorts. So, what I think is the best method that I've worked with is to simply make sure that your material is hanging into your etchant. And as long as it's hanging in the etching solution, then you shouldn't have any issue with uh, buildup in one area causing a problem. So the way we'll start this off is we're taping off the back because we don't want this to etch at all on the rear. And I've gone and we've got a piece of styrofoam that is sized appropriately to fit with our thing. And remember, you don't want to touch the face of this because any of your oils from your skin will have some minor effect on the etching, even if they're not going to be a major cause. And for the just as overall for the most consistent result possible, you don't want to have other things getting in the way. So I'll take this here and I'm just taping near the edge and folding that over so that we've got it's gripped onto the styrofoam block there. Then we can go ahead, get the other side. Oh, I think I got that a little bit too close. Yeah, I don't want that so close to the uh, to the border there because it'll make it a lot harder to have a clean edge that we're going to cut along later. There we have this, and this should help suspend our thing in the solution. 
And here we go. We just got a small plastic container. And this is just something that's the right size that we can fit the whole thing into there. And we'll start off with our ferric chloride pouring an even layer into the bottom. And it's a bit uh, gunky in there from last time, but that shouldn't be a problem. Now, we'll lower this into there and we'll make sure we add in enough that it's still floating. Okay, so now that that's floating, I'm going to just take this, close it up so that we don't have too much evaporation from that and sit this and leave it there for a couple hours and we'll see how it is. Also, a good benefit I found with this method is it's really easy to just pull it out and check it from time to time to see how deep the etch goes. Whereas with some other solution, some other setups, it can be a little bit more difficult to do that. With this, you just lift the styrofoam block out, take a look, and if you want it to etch longer, you set it back in. And we'll be back in a minute. All right, it's been a couple hours now. Get into this and see how well we're doing. So, I've checked on this a little bit so far, and for one, <clears throat> I probably should have put some acetone on the back too. The tape started to peel up. And two, that floating gunk on the top was actually not a real good idea to leave it in place. It did start to leave a little bit of uh, some uh, marks and stuff on it. I, I got it off and I wiped it down a bit to help with that and then let it etch in a little bit more. So hopefully that isn't going to show up too bad in there, but we can now get a good wipe on this and should be able to see what our results are. And yeah, looking at that, I think I'm going to go ahead and say that that's probably a uh, good enough depth that to, even with some of this, uh, you can see up here with some of this stuff that's been a little bit uh, under etched due to that to that stuff that was floating on the surface. I think that I cleaned it off early enough that it's now all etched low enough that we shouldn't see any of the see any of that uh, popping up. So now, first and foremost, very importantly, we want to get all of this put away. So, I've just got my bottle again, and what I actually do, is I take a funnel, and I actually take one of those uh, paint fil filters, and I always do this because I never know what gunk is going to come off from my last etch, and pour it through that filter, and that should make sure any of those chips and garbage and other gunk should get caught in the filter and not make it into whatever next thing we decide to etch. Speaking of, for this project, I'm not really sure there's a whole lot more that I need to etch. There's the, there's the plate that goes on top of our our threading dial and that plate I wanted to get re-etched. I did make an attempt at it. I don't remember where I put the piece though. It's somewhere around here. But I have plenty of material from that. I actually have this full uh, length piece and the plate is only like a little two inch thing off the top of that. And anyway, yeah, see this is why I want to filter that out there's a bunch of gunk in there and all that stuff is reusable for a very large number of runs so now all I need to do with this is we'll just let this dry out 
and once it's all dry you can scrape down any of the hard residue and throw it away but you have to wait till it's dried out otherwise it can seep into things and you don't want it getting into groundwater or anything like that so this goes somewhere warm so it can dry out and then we get over to cleaning up our the rest of our stuff so same as before we're going to start by just getting a little bit of acetone on this and we're going to want to wipe off everything that we've put in there before mm, it should give us a nice cleaned surface for all of the paint to stick to As you can see, like I said, the tape the tape was kind of peeling up on the back, but luckily it's not so much that it actually did more than discoloring that, so it didn't actually do any etching on the back, so we're good on that. But the paint we have here is an oil-based enamel painting, paint, and this is designed to cure to be uh, hard as well and hard and uh, grease and oil resistant that way we don't have to worry so much about this getting damaged later on plus this stuff should set really level inside of all of those cracks And also a nice thing is this won't just rub off with acetone or anything afterwards. We'd have to either use some sort of paint stripper or manual removal, such as with sandpaper, which is actually what we're going to do. Once this is cured over a couple days, we're going to come at this with a light sandpaper on a flat plate. I would use a surface plate if I had a cheap one to sacrifice for this, or really if I had one at all, I would put a layer down to coat, protect it, and then use the surface plate. But uh, I'm going to have to settle for using a thick sheet of plate glass, which is going to be about as flat as a surface as I can really use for this at this time. But yeah, what we'll do is we go at it with a very very fine grit sandpaper and gently go back and forth until we've gotten all of the high points brushed down and that will give us that nice contrast between this filled back edges and the shiny brass high letters and borders. And it'll look great. So, as you can see here, I'm brushing because You'll actually see that it bubbles up in areas, and brushing this helps force some more of that paint down into the cracks where it's having a hard time sticking in. Now I'll make sure we don't have any voids underneath this paint. Because yes, as I said, this paint will not dry. There's no solvent in it keeping it wet. This paint, as it gets exposed to the air, cures and hardens like an epoxy. But this is just a an enamel. So, one little more go over with this. And I think we should be good there. And this will uh, give this a couple days to get completely cured and then we'll be able to have that final reveal. So, a little update here on this. I'm going to finish off the video here, but uh tried over a good week and a half uh, getting this enamel paint to go on well here, and unfortunately it uh, seems to want to go on really thick, and then when it goes on thick it's not curing really well like had some of this stuff sitting around for two or three days and it was still tacky eventually using some hardener so i've got it over here 
I was able to get a thin enough layer down that uh, dried in a recent amount, of, a decent amount of time, and overall came out with a good finish and everything for it. But I'm pretty certain with this, I'm going to need to get a second coating on. You look in there, a lot of these high spots didn't actually fill in. Like that's not even sanding or anything. That was just stuff didn't fill in because I had to thin it out and everything enough just to get a good finish on that but uh yeah this video is long overdue and i've been working on it for a few weeks so I'll end it here with uh with this and i'm gonna get some uh, an extra coat at least on this and clean it all up till everything looks good trim the edges drill the holes and next time you see this uh plate it'll be on the finished quick change gearbox which is the next thing that's coming out but anyways uh thank you for watching see you next time